Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I mean, it really is an absolute honour to be invited to speak here. You know, I've been involved with the University of Wolverhampton for a couple of years now, and I really, really like being invited back. So thank you very much for that. Yeah, I did have quite an exciting career as an athlete. Um, whilst I have a number of accomplishments and accolades to my name that I'm very, very proud of, they don't define me, you know, they don't truly paint a picture of who I really am. I was an athlete. When I tell people that I'm retired at the grand old age of 30, I do get some funny looks. Um, but it was an amazing facet of my life. So now I class myself more as an entrepreneur. I set up my first business in 2012, a speaking and training company. I wanted to use my expertise, my experience to help others. And I do a lot of work helping students deal with exam nerves, championing equality and diversity. And also, I really like working with people to develop a performance mindset. I've also set up another company, co-founded an inclusive sports organisation where we create a level playing field so people of all abilities and disabilities can take part in sport together. So that's really, really fun as well. Success is something that's always fascinated me for as long as I can remember. I've always had big dreams for the future. And whilst I haven't always known what that success would look like, I always knew that whatever vocation I ended up in, I was going to be really good at it. Failure was not an option. And I learned lots of things when I researched success. I learned that success is different for all of us. The world would be a very boring place if we all wanted to be athletes, scientists or engineers. So really, you have to decide what success means to you. You've got to come up with your own definition. There's no point putting a plan in place to actually get there if you don't know what success means to you but others find it hard. I think a good place to start is actually to look backwards and look back at the choices that you made. Look back at all those paths that converge and lead you to where you are right now. The opportunities that you jump at, the plans that you stick to and those that you abandon or adapt. There are the skills that you learn, there are the people that supported you, and there are the steps that you take to make sure you get heard. I firmly believe that success is a choice. We're all dealt different cards. We all come in different shapes and sizes with different wants, needs, and desires, and we all have different talents and abilities. And I believe if we work with what we've got, if we persist, if we pursue, and if we refuse to give in, then we are all capable of achieving great things. When I look back and reflect on my success, actually this mentality forms the backbone of a lot of it. Whenever I was in a situation that was really tough and I thought, I can't do this, my immediate response was to go, yes, I can, there's no such thing as can't. I just need to find another way round. I just need to find another way to do it. Success isn't easy. I really learned about resilience as a teenager when I became disabled. I've got something called complex regional pain syndrome. It's a neurological condition that causes chronic pain in both my feet all the time. I couldn't stop it from happening and it had a huge impact on my life. Prior to this, I'd been super active. I loved sport, I loved trying any new sport, being outdoors, it was great fun. Um, my disability took that away from me. 
Confidence is the thing that gets you through the interview process, gets you pay rises, gets you promotions. Confidence is super, super important to my achievements. Start actually recognizing when I've done something good instead of focusing on all the negatives. So as I say, that, that self-confidence is an ability, a quality that I've used to great effect in sport, in education, in business, and it is absolutely essential for success. Now, sport, business, you know, those, those two often equated very similarly in that it's often seen as an uphill struggle, it's quite ruthless, where qualities like determination, tenacity, ruthlessness are um, apprised. Kindness often doesn't get a mention and I think that it's really, really important to actually focus on. People should still be held to a high standard and they should be held accountable for falling below that. We should still expect to deliver and produce results. But I always think that, you know, if a leader is kind and honest and fair, that critical reception actually comes across much better. Now, what I've found is that being kind to people actually ends up getting a good result later down the line. Uh, and I do love this, this quote, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So all about the emotional bank account. And, and this is something that I, I now value very highly and I, I do think has an important place in success. And it's something, as I said, I never thought I'd probably ever hear myself saying as an athlete because that was not an environment where it was, it was, it was prized or prioritised. I do find that actually working and my involvement with the University of Wolverhampton you know, has so far has been absolutely amazing and I've been involved with projects that's all about change and good causes. So it's actually really nice to see that value uh, being used here.